This morning at breakfast, we were talking about Psalm 15, and it begins asking the question, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill? The idea is, who can be at home in your presence? Not simply visiting you now and again with a prayer request, but who feels at home in your presence? And he has a whole list of pointed issues that he brings up. He who walks uprightly. In other words, a person who purposefully walks on on the side that pleases God and who works righteousness, who, who practically seeks to do what's right in his life, who speaks truth in his heart, not simply from his lips, but in his heart he wants to communicate what is true and doesn't backbite with his tongue. He's not tearing other people down, uh, does evil to his neighbor. Uh, he doesn't take up reproach against a friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised. And that's the phrase that caught my attention. Here's the issue. We live in a world where vile people are admired. They're the musicians. They're the humorists, the comedians. They're the politicians. And when they are able to speak with foul language, for some reason, people admire this. When I was a boy, the teachers would tell us as students who were just in the formative stages of life that using foul language was the vain attempt of a weak mind to express itself forcefully. That's what I learned in public school. But today, people use foul language as, as if they're breathing. And, and so here, the scripture says that a person who wants to feel at home in God's presence doesn't think comedians are funny when they make a mockery of sin. And it's a choice we have to make because we listen to it at first we excuse it, then we get used to it, and then we end up admiring it. What a dangerous thing that is. I want to tell you a little story about this. John talks about this, and in the Jabe Nicholson paraphrase, in 1 John chapter 3, verses 6 and 7 and 8, he talks about this issue and basically says, Little children... Don't let anybody fool you. If you do what's right, you're right. And if you don't do what's right, you're doing the devil's work. Paul said that what we need to do, our attitude is to abhor what is evil and to cling to what is good. Like this is radical stuff. We're hanging on in our society. We're hanging on for our dear lives to what is good. And we are to abhor. It's like, ugh, I can't stand it. And to take this position on what is evil. So when our son was just a little fellow, um, he had a sister or two, for starters, and we were trying to teach him it wasn't a good idea to biff his sisters. Well, we were at a Bible camp, and they had set up this, like a wooden horse, on which two campers were sitting, and they had pillows, and they were trying to knock the other one off, and they had polished this wood so it was slippery, and underneath there was a mud puddle, and the idea was to knock the other person into the mud puddle. And the students, or the uh, campers were all cheering one another, and this was all looking like good fun. And John was watching this, and he tugged up my sleeve, and he said, Daddy, that's bad, isn't it? You know, one of the things we begin to do when we learn to reason is that we use our reasoning skills to rationalize. And we can't afford to do this. Little children... If you do what's right, you're right. And if you don't do what's right, you're not right. There's no mixing of light and darkness. 
And you know, some people talk about this gray areas. There are no gray areas in the Christian life. There are some things to one person it's white and to another person it's black. Like, for example, the keeping of festivals. In the days of the early church, there were Jewish believers who said, we are not going to celebrate Pentecost anymore. We're not going to celebrate Passover anymore because now we have Christ. And their next door neighbor was saying, we want to celebrate the Passover and Pentecost. What a beautiful way to teach the fulfillment of these things in Christ. Both of them were doing it or not doing it to the glory of God. To neither of them was it a gray area. To one it was black, to the other it was white. But they were thoroughly persuaded to do what they believed was right. Now we live in a world of grays today. And we need to realize that we need to become like little children again. Paul said, I'm afraid for you, lest you be beguiled from the simplicity that's in Christ. If you do what's right, you're right. And if you don't do what's right, you're not right. We need to be simple regarding evil and wise concerning the good. And when someone uses foul language, no matter how little or how much, it's wrong. When they make a mockery of sin, it may seem to be funny. But it's wrong, because sin damns souls, takes people to hell. So we don't think it's funny. And we make a conscious choice of doing that, to abhor what is evil, and to cling to what is good. God help us to rediscover, not to be childish, but to be childlike, and to see things clearly in black and white, in truth and error, in good and evil, and so to walk in the presence of the Lord, to dwell in his presence, to be at home in his presence, and not to play fast and loose with the attitudes of the world that slowly erode away our standard of what is right until eventually we find ourselves incapable of making sound moral judgments. Don't let anybody fool you. If you do what's right, you're right. And if you do what's wrong, you're doing the devil's work.